Hi everyone, today is the 38th day test for our dry pour versus wet pour concrete. I got busy this past week due to holidays and graduation, so I was not able to test on the 28th day as I promised in my previous video, but I believe it actually works better because people think that dry pour cures a lot slower than the wet pour. So at 38 days, dry pour concrete should caught up to the wet pour in terms of strength at this point. If this is your first time watching my videos, Make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell icon. I do a lot of DIY videos as well as product reviews. Also, if you're interested in dry pour concrete topics, make sure to check out my other dry pour experiment videos. And before we start, I wanted to make sure that you understand why we are using a small sample because I received some comments in my first video telling me that I should test using a real life scenario by making a full slab and drive my odyssey over it. The reason we are using a small sample is because we are simply trying to figure out if the dry pour method will exhibit the same strength as the wet pour method. Will it be stronger, weaker, and if so, by how much? And hopefully this will help you make a decision whether to use the dry pour method or to spend the extra time and use the conventional wet pour method in your project. By using a smaller sample, we can quickly see the difference in strength between the wet pour and the dry pour because it will take a lot of beating quickly compared to using a thick and large slab. For today's test, I will be putting this to the same test we did in the past two videos. And to be fair, for both samples, I will be switching them around on each round of test. I'm thinking I'll drive over it forward and reverse and check the samples to see if there's any damage and then switch them around. Maybe we'll do 10 rounds or until one of them breaks. So if you can see here, I wrote dry and wet on each samples. And I also number them so that we are not only switching their places, but also rotate them at the same time. So it's going to go like this first. And then I'm going to switch them like this. And then I'm going to go like this and then switch them. And then I'm going to go like this and switch them. You know, and we'll do it at least 10 times. And if you find this video helpful, make sure to click the like button and leave a comment below to help this reach more people. So as we start the test, I want you to write down your guess on how many rounds it will take for us to see any crack on the wet pour and the dry pour. And then share with us how close you are with our test at the end. And with that, let's go ahead and start with the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the dry pour on the passenger side. And then the wet pour on the driver's side. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and do it. Okay, so round one. Okay, and let me go backwards. So this is the wet pour right now, still good. And this is the dry pour. And it did give in uh, the side, it's very little right there. So we're gonna continue the test. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to the other side. Okay, so, so now I'll be putting the dry pour here on the driver side. And I'm still gonna point it to number one, okay? And wet pour. It's going to be on this side, still pointing to number one. Let's go ahead and drive over it and back again. Okay, and I'm going to go back. Okay, so round two. This is the dry pour. Looks like the side is starting to give in. And this is the wet pour. Still good. So let me go ahead and switch them now. I'm gonna put the dry pour here again. Okay, so there is a little crack right here on the wet pour, so look like this one right here, okay? So I'm gonna put the dry pour here now. Now I'm gonna point it to number two. Wet pour, I'm gonna put number two right here, okay? And let's go ahead and do another test. Forward. Backwards.
So I think this is our third test, right? So let's go ahead and check it again. Okay, so wet pour looks like the side uh, gave in a little. It's right there. Okay, and let me go put this thing away. So we're starting with a clean slate and I'm gonna move this into the other side. And this is our dry pour. Uh, there are some stuff here and also this one right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the wet pour here, also number two, and the dry pour on this side, pointing to number two. Okay, so I think this is our third or fourth one. I lost count already. Let me go forward and back. Okay, so let's go forward. I think when I uh, moved earlier, they both got pushed to the back. See that? That thing like flew away. And I have my dry pour over there. And I have my wet pour here. They both got uh, thrown to the back. So let me go ahead and move my car forward and let's see the damage that it's done for both samples. Okay, so this is the dry pour. The side's starting to chip in. And this is the wet pour. So let's go reset them. I'm gonna put them again in the front. Okay, so this time we're gonna be putting the dry pour here again and I'm gonna put it on number three. Wet pour on this side with number three. Now let me go move forward and back. Okay, so let me go ahead and stay here for at least a minute on the top. Okay, so now I'm gonna go move forward. Okay, so it looks like they both got thrown out again. My car is probably taking some beating too. Let me show you. Wet pour. There's some pieces right there. Dry pour. Let's see. Dry pour. Okay, so they're both number... I think we were at number three, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go switch them around and still stay them, let them stay on number three, okay? Okay, so this time I put dry pour here, number three. Wet pour here, number three. Okay, I'm gonna go backward now. Okay, so this one goes well. Okay, so it looks like none of them really took that much damage. Uh, very little over there. So let me go ahead and switch them around this time. This is the wet pour. So now I'm gonna go dry pour number four. Wet pour number four, facing the tire. What I'm gonna do at this time is I'll be trying to stay on the top of the concrete for at least a minute again, just like earlier. Okay, let me go ahead and move forward a little. Okay, so I'm just gonna stay here for about a minute. Okay, so it's a minute now, and let me go move forward. Okay, and I'm gonna go move backward, and then we will examine both. Okay, so after one full rotation, so what we did is we started like this, passenger side, driver side, and then we switch it, right? And then we switch it again, but point it to number two, and then we switch it, and then we switch it again to number three, and then we switch it, and then we switch it again to number four, 
and we switch it back like this so basically right now this is the damage that dry pour concrete took so this is the dry pour there's a little damage on the top and right here you can see the side is starting to crumble and this is the wet pour there's a little damage here also and this is the bottom okay so that's one round uh, it looks like this one is starting to come off as well okay so that's how they look like after one round so it looks like the dry pour have caught up to the wet pour but it's still weaker than the wet pour okay so how about we do one more round okay and see if there's gonna be any difference okay so again we're gonna start with the dry pour on the passenger side and we're gonna start with one pointing to the tires and the wet pour on the driver's side with one pointing to the tires okay okay let me go move forward let me go move backward okay let me go stay here for about a minute okay so it's a minute let me go move back Okay, so it looks like both of them did well this time. They're both clean. And this is the wet pour. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch them around. Okay, let me go move forward and back. Okay, I'm going to go move backward. Okay, wow, it looks like they're both doing well this time. So as long as I go slow on moving forward and back, they seem to be holding up well. Uh, this thing have a small chip. Okay, okay. so this is the wet pour, no damage at all. So now I'm going to put the dry pour here now with number two. And the wet pour here with number two as well. Okay, so let me go ahead and move forward and back. And I'll try to see if I can stay on top of this for another minute. I think I'm on top already. So I'm just gonna stay here for a minute. Okay, it's been a minute. Let me go drive forward slowly. Okay, so both of them got thrown out to the back again. Uh, my fault, uh, I know why are they getting thrown out, it looks like. Every time I forget to remove the parking brake and I move forward, they get thrown out in the back. So anyway, this is how they are right now. And this is what pour. Uh-huh. I have to remove it. Okay, so now we have the dry pour there again with number three facing the tire. Wet pour here with number three facing the tire. Okay, I'm going to go slowly this time and i just realized you know i'm trying to do the recording and sometimes i do forget to remove the parking brake when i move forward and that's the reason the concretes are being thrown to the back but you know they're both getting the beating but i believe if you do slowly they will actually held up a lot better okay but at least we can see how both concrete reacts when they are being thrown to the back wheels okay okay so now let me go ahead and move forward and back i'm gonna try to do it as smooth as I can. I'm gonna try to stay on the top and then move forward and then stay on the top and then move back, okay? Okay, so let me go ahead, move forward, stay on top. And I'm gonna stay here for a minute. Okay, it's been a minute. I'm gonna go move forward slowly. Okay. And I'm going to move back and stay on top again. And I'm going to stay here for another minute. Okay, I'm just going to go roll back. So it looks like we got a fail this time. 
So this is the dry pour. Got a crack right there. And this is the wet pour. Okay, so that's number three. Okay. So let me go ahead and gonna put this wet pour to the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this dry pour here now. So I'll put wet pour here with number three facing the tire. And you know, I'll just put it here as well, just to be fair. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here with number three facing the tire. And again, I'm gonna go forward and back. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go forward slowly and I'm gonna try to stay on top of it again for maybe another minute. Okay, so that's a fail. I did not I was not able to stay on top. But what I'll do is I'll check them out first and make sure they are on the correct spots, okay? Okay, so I have this wet pool right here. Just gonna leave it here so I can move back from it. It looks like the dry pour, uh, since it's already cracked, that it would not hold its place anymore. Um, it's actually over there right now. Dry pour. Let me go find the other piece. And here's the other pieces of the dry pour. And that one right there okay so the dry pour have completely gave up okay so i'm gonna go ahead and finish the wet pour so i'm gonna do wet pour here that's number three right now and then i'm gonna do number four again on both sides okay so let's go ahead and complete round two for wet pour and let's see if wet pour is going to held its own okay so let me go ahead and finish this let me go back up on here Okay, so let me stay here for another minute since we only have uh, three left, three more tests left. So I'll stay here for another minute and then I'll switch this again to the passenger side and do a turn and let's do another minute on that side, okay? Okay, so it's been a minute. Let me go back up. Okay, so wet pour still fine. I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the driver's side and put it on number four, okay, just to complete this rotation. And let me go ahead and move forward and back. I'm going to try to stay on top of it as well. So I'm going to move forward and if I can feel it, I'll stay on top of it. Okay, I'll stay here for about a minute. Okay, now I'm going to go completely forward. Okay. And I'm going to go back and stay on top of it again. Okay, now let's go ahead and check it. Okay, so this is still your wet pour. So let's go check both and let's talk about the conclusion. So this is a sample for the wet pour. You can see a lot of damage happens to the side, which is expected because that is the weakest part of the concrete. So this is the bottom of the wet pour. That's the side of the wet pour where all the damage have happened okay and this is a sample that's left from the dry pour so during the beginning of our testing we saw that the sides of the dry pour have received more damage as compared to the wet pour but the overall strength was there until the third set of the second round 
where it finally breaks in the middle. Okay, so it's right there. So if you look here, this is the seven day sample that we have. So after one pass of the car, it just received a cup, uh, just it, it did receive some damages to the side. Okay, so I think this is about the same amount of damage that we received when we passed the car here one time. So I would say that that's about equivalent to a 70% strength of the wet poured concrete. So if you have not seen the previous experiment, I encourage you to watch them and share with us your observation. I will post their link in the card above and the description below as well as at the end of this video. I would say that if you're okay with 70% of concrete strength, then feel free to use the dry pour method. If I remember correctly, when I received the quote for the driveway, the spec they listed is only 3,000 PSI. So this will work for a driveway, especially if you're only going to park a small passenger vehicle. But if you have a choice, I would go with the manufacturer's recommended method. If you think about it, you already spent time preparing the base and putting the forms. So why not spend a little more time to get a stronger concrete? I understand that the wet poured method is a little intimidating because once you wet the concrete, you have limited time to finish your project. And if you're doing it alone, it looks impossible to do. So try dividing your project into a smaller section maybe. But if you have no other choice, then use the dry poured method. A dry poured walkway is better than a muddy walkway. And also, a walkway or a backyard slab does not really need a 4,000 PSI concrete. The only thing I would say if you wanted to use the dry poured method is to make sure that you continue to water the concrete and keep it hydrated for the full 28 days. Because even in the wet poured method, they advise that you keep the concrete hydrated for 28 days for stronger cure. So I hope that this video is helpful to you. Please help me out by subscribing to my channel and hit the like button and comment below if you prefer the dry poured method or the wet poured method. And if you're using the dry poured method, what will be your limitation? Thank you for watching.